My name is Mike Buckworth. I'm a partner at Buckworth Solicitors, and I'm going to talk about company incorporation. There are two main legal structures that people tend to use for, for startup businesses. The first is a limited company, so that's a company limited by shares. And the second is a limited liability partnership. Um, th there's one sort of commonality between them, which is that they both have limited liability. And what that means is, other than in a few sort of um, fairly narrow circumstances, um, the founders, the, the shareholders, the owners, um, won't be liable for any debts of the company or for you know, any problems if the company goes, goes bust. Um, the things that are different about them really is, is the tax treatment. So a limited company is, um, is a separate legal person for tax purposes. Um, it's taxed as, a, as an individual entity and the founders are only taxed, the shareholders are only taxed um, on any profits that they actually draw from the business. A limited liability partnership, however, is effectively see-through for tax purposes. So what that means is that the, um, the partners are taxed um, individually on the proportional bid of the profits that they would be entitled to. Well, quite surprisingly, setting up a, a limited company in the UK is actually pretty simple. Um, and it's also pretty cheap as well. Um, we would suggest that people do it online. Um, there are two online platforms that, that actually I quite like using. The first one is provided by Companies House, the regulator. And the second one is provided by um, a, a company called Companies Made Simple. Um, you basically go onto the platform, um, find a company name that, that is available, um, fill in the founder's details, and then sort of follow through the form. Um, and it, it is relatively self-explanatory how, how to do that. I think the one question that we do get asked is, uh, is what the share capital is and, and how that works. Um, the, the key sort of defined term is, is nominal value. Um, and that is basically the, the actual value of the share. That's what you pay to the company to get your shares. Um, there's also a second term that is used, which is premium, and effectively that's anything above the nominal value. So when you're incorporating a company, nominal value, uh, we would suggest is a penny, premium should be nothing. So you should, you should not be sort of paying anything additional for your shares. There are two main documents that are used when you incorporate a company. The first is the Memorandum of Association, which when you incorporate online is done for you, essentially. The second is the Articles of Association. Now, the articles are basically the sort of the rules, the constitutional document that governs the, uh, the company and how it operates. So they set out, you know, simple things like how board meetings work and how shareholders resolution would happen. And to some extent, they also regulate the relationship between the stakeholders. And we would suggest that on incorporation, people use standard articles. And all you have to do to use them is, is just ticker box. Um, there is an option to, to use bespoke articles, but in our experience actually um, articles have to be changed when, um, when, when people execute a shareholders agreement, which you know, may happen before an investment, but certainly will be happening in an investment round. And at that stage, it, you know, that's when the work and the expense can go with, with amending the articles. The first top tip would be incorporate with penny shares. Uh, the reason for that is, is actually very simple. If you incorporate with pound shares, then the nominal value, which actually does have to be paid into the company's account, can get very large very quickly, particularly if you've got investment coming on board. So start with penny shares. It's a lot easier to deal with in the long run. The second top tip would be um, if you've got non-UK founders or you've perhaps got founders in the UK who are not readily available, um, leave them off the original incorporation. Um, the reason for that is that when you set up your bank account, you're going to have to go to the bank and they're going to require copies of passports and proofs of address and signatures from each of the founders. Um, if you can't get the founders to the bank, you can't set up a bank account. So you know, keep it simple, you know, just set up with people who are readily available. And the final thing would be when you do go to the bank, um, don't ask for credit. Uh, if you ask for credit, then they may well need personal guarantees, they perhaps have to do additional credit checks. Um, to get the business account set up quickly, just get a basic account, basic debit card, and then worry about credit cards and, and all those sorts of things much later.